Here's a very interesting take by Foreign Policy Magazine as to the direction this Middle East revolt may ultimately take. They write, On Obama's watch, the regional balance of influence and power has shifted even further away from the United States and toward Iran and its allies. The Islamic Republic has continued to deepen its alliances with Syria and Turkey and expand its influence into Iraq, Lebanon, and Palestine. Public opinion polls, for example, continue to show that the key leaders in the Middle East resistance bloc, uh, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, Syrian President Bashar Assad, uh, Lebanon's Hassan Nasrallah, Hamas's Khalid uh, Mizlo, and Turkish Prime Minister uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan are all vastly more popular across the region than their counterparts in closely U.S. aligned and supported regimes in Jordan, the Palestinian Authority, and uh, Saudi Arabia. And now the Obama administration stands by helplessly as new openings for Tehran to reset the regional balance in its favor emerge in Bahrain, Egypt, uh, Tunisia, Yemen, and perhaps elsewhere. If these pro-American Arab political orders currently being challenged or upended by significant protest uh, movements become at all more uh, representative of their populations. They will no doubt become less enthusiastic about strategic cooperation with the United States. And if these pro-American regimes are not replaced by Salafi-dominated uh, Islamist orders, the uh, Arab governments that emerge from the present turmoil are likely to be at least somewhat receptive to Iran's message of resistance and independence from Israel and the West. Certainly any government in Cairo that is even mildly more representative than Hosni Mubarak's regime will not be, a, be, not be willing to uh, keep collaborating with Israel to enforce the siege of, Ga of Gaza or to continue participating in the CIA's rendition program to bring Egyptians back uh, to Egypt to be tortured. Likewise, any political order in Bahrain that rep uh, respects the reality of that country's Shiite majority population would be firmly opposed to the uh, uh, use of its territory as a platform for U.S. military action against Iranian interests. Over the next year, all these developments will shift the regional balance even more against the United States and in favor of Iran. If Jordan, a loyal U.S. client state, were to come into play during this period, that would tilt things even further in Iran's direction. The United States faces serious challenges in the Middle East. Its strategic position in this vital part of the world is eroding before our eyes. This shift away from a U.S. friendly Middle East is coming and plays right into the hands of Bible prophecy. I truly look for Iran to divert regional power away from the U.S. and for Russia to seize the opportunity to gain full control without U.S. intervention. For many years, Russia has had its eye on conquering the Middle East, but they have always known that the risk uh, was much too great as long as a U.S.-Israeli uh, partnership existed. Over the next year, it is highly conceivable that the present U.S. administration will turn its back on Israel, starting with the withholding of its U.N. veto. Although the U.S. has continued to stand behind Israel, I see that support wavering over the coming year as they compete with Iran for supremacy in the region. Could Israel's only two supposed Islamic peace partners be lost over the next 12 months? Could the U.S. lose its uh, grip on the Middle East and its strategic partnerships with teetering nations to Iranian influence? I have to believe this could be a very real possibility that could further isolate Israel militarily, placing them in a very vulnerable and possibly existential position. This is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.